Alright you guys, I think I'm going to run this apex down, making my lip balm. I am fluctuating between 12%, 10%, and like I saw it jump up to 15, so again the, the display on this apex is a little wonky, but I'm right at 11%, so I pretty much want to shut this off right now. <laughs> I'm getting a little nervous. If you're making lip balm and a sticks and bricks and you don't have to worry about your energy consumption, then you're probably not going to be nervous like that right now. The beeswax is still not fully melted. There's little tiny specks of it in here. So it's going to be a lot better for the apex, hopefully, when I get my solar panels hooked up to it and I could be like continuously um, charging it. But for right now, I'm just charging it like one full charge at a time. So started out at a hundred percent and I'm already down to 10 almost and you don't really want to take this too much lower than 10 so I'm wondering if the unit will shut off actually it might shut off because that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to have a battery like manage a battery management system or something so like if it gets too low it should shut off I'm hoping that this will melt see the more you stir it the more it the quicker it goes so that's why I'm standing here stirring it trying to get this stuff get all melted so I can turn this apex unit off While I wait for that, I'm going to show you what happens. There's there's one hole here. I think it's this one here. It's really loose. So when I try to turn this over, it wants to fall out. And so I just put my hand there. There it went. It keeps trying to fall out, but thankfully it fell back in. It's pretty level there. So I'm going to use my masking tape to tape off those extra holes. Wow, that was really loud. Hopefully you heard all that. Still holding at 10% there. I know masking tape isn't really like heat proof or anything, but it will be very quick. I'll work very quickly here, hopefully. None of this is actually really quick. If I did things differently, maybe it could be quicker, but I'm, I'm not like that, so. <laughs> Have to do everything the hard way, you know. Oh no, it's saying seven percent now. Oh boy. Okay. I wonder what's gonna happen. It should be done. Yep. Okay. Good. Well, it was about perfect timing, I guess, because beeswax it's pretty much all the way melted through all right so now I'm gonna add those oil based extracts and my essential oils and then I'm gonna pour it somewhere over here right there. I have 
this plastic scraper and so after I pour it I can actually like level it off with this. This happens to be the exact same width as the tray. All right, we're good. Wow. That says it's fluctuating between four and seven percent right now. I almost want to keep it on to see what would happen to see if it'll stop on its own. It should stop on its own, but I'm afraid that it might not. <laughs> and I don't want to ruin the darn thing. All right, well, it's done. So I'm going to turn it off anyways, because I don't want the oils to get too hot. All right. I think I'll just leave that running. Okay. So these are my extracts. And I use just like a half teaspoon of each, you know. on that one so I'll pour some back in. I always wipe the bottles when I'm done so that you're not having a bunch of oil dripping down the side. So those are really delicate, so I'm adding them off the heat right before I pour it. And you have to be very quick with this stuff because when it starts cooling off, it starts cooling off. Alright. Okay, so these are my essential oils. For this recipe, I use four different ones. And I don't, I can't always keep them in the original bottles because the droppers, sometimes the oil comes out too quickly or it comes out too, too slowly out of the droppers. And so if that's the case, I transfer them to these little dropper bottles where I have more control over what's coming out. And for this recipe, I use um, about 70 some drops of essential oil. I should probably time lapse that, but I'm not going to. And see, this one it comes out okay usually. I 
and so I can keep that in the original bottle. And this one comes out okay too. showing up on camera or not. So when you store these, you actually don't want to store them with the droppers in the bottles. It's best to just like have a regular cap on there and store the droppers separately, but I cheat. But what that means is these may degrade over time and break down and so I would have to just buy new droppers for my bottles but at the very least what you want to do is push out all the oils before you set it down in there and put the lid on to store it and so ideally there's nothing left in the dropper because if there's stuff left left in the dropper it'll the the aromas the essential oils will come up in here and will start to degrade them because it's really strong stuff and so you would just take it and you push the dropper in, set it down in there, let it pull up however much. So you can see, hopefully, that it pulled up a lot. And then when you're done, you push it all back down. And I like to tap it around like that. And make sure it's all out and then just set it down in there and screw it on and so this is ready now all I have to do is pour it my apex says it's still at 9% the fan is still on 10% it just jumped 18 and then down to 8 boy this display is really kind of funky I must say. So I'm just going to turn this off just because it's not doing anything. It's not really discharging that much, just whatever the fan's taking. So I'm going to have to recharge that, but that'll give me an opportunity to try out my new Renogy solar panel if I can get some sunshine here in the Midwest. We're going into autumn, so I don't actually have a lot of sunshine. Whoa, be careful. All right, let's do it. This is the pain in the butt. It would be much easier if I just poured it into tins. I'm pretty sure I said that already. Oof. And see, it sticks to everything. Now that it's um, fully melted and everything's combined, once it hardens, it sticks to everything. Like it just hardens and it turns into wound or uh, lip balm. I know I said that earlier. That was wrong. I'm not making wound balm. I'm making lip balm. So when you take that out, you need to dry off the bottom. You don't want any water in this. Water is the enemy to any kind of balm like this. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. I'm going to guess I don't, but we'll see. I do like the tray because even if you spill, you can uh, you can kind of fix that. And so what you want to do is scrape while you're filling. This stuff hardens really quickly once it comes out of the the heat. And you can set that back in there. 
that you just have to work really, really quickly. Let's see, it's already too late for some of it. It's already hardening. So I'm going to have to take that and put it back in here and let it liquefy again. This really is tedious work. And since you don't want to waste any of that, you have to just scrape it off and put it back in there in the cup and let it warm back up. But this is what small batch is all about. If I was a huge corporation or, or whatever, I would have a big machine that did all this for me. But I don't. Very messy, very time consuming. Not something that the general public wants to do normally. But if you want to make your own stuff, you can. It just takes some time and effort and love. Because, boy, if you don't love this, you're not going to want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Did I say that already? I think I said that already. again because it's taking too long but I don't have to turn the burner back on because the water is already still hot enough that it'll melt that pretty easily and then I can try to pour into these tubes see I've got a little bit of extra loss this time because I'm not going to be able to fill all these tubes And that kind of sucks because then I'm going to have all these half filled tubes. Oh, see, I don't even have to turn the camera off. It's already melted back down almost. me I could probably edit out a lot of this but you know this is real time kind of thing it's not even real time I this, this takes hours and hours if you count all the different steps and the waiting and all that a lot of it is just waiting You can try to pour it into each one individually. Like at this point, that's what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, this is <laughs> very messy. And I have a lot of half filled tubes which is really aggravating <clears throat> excuse me let me show you you may not be able to hear me but I can at least show you see that those are the only filled ones these are pretty much half filled so I underestimated how much I had here. 
That was a total underestimation. So now I'm stuck with a predicament. I, you know, I can try to melt, remelt that, which is really hard to do because they're in plastic and I don't want to heat them up really. But I don't have too many other choices. I'm not sure why it didn't fill up as many as it normally does. I don't know. I wish I knew everything. <laughs> but as this melts, or uh, hardens, excuse me, as it hardens, it will create that divot there that you probably saw. And so I can kind of just smush this in. It's still soft enough that I can do this. I can kind of fill in the divots. But those other tubes, I'm just going to have to deal with them being half full. That's just a loss for me. There's nothing I can do about it, really. I mean, I'll use it. It's no big deal. I'll use it in my personal life. I use a lot of lip balm, and my friends also like to use it. And they don't care if it's not perfect. So the imperfect ones will go there. Actually, this whole batch will probably be given away, so it's, it's no big deal. I'm used to just giving away my stuff. There's a little tiny bit left here. I don't like to waste any of it. This recipe normally makes like 36 to 38 tubes. I'm not sure what the problem is right now. But I am experimenting. Like I said, I normally don't even do this on the apex. I'll just do it on my shore power here in my garage. No, maybe I measured wrong this time. I don't know. I've been in a lot of pain for a couple weeks, so it's possible that I measured something wrong. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you get what you get. And I love it no matter what. <clears throat> Excuse me. I may just start pouring it into the metal containers. I mean, I'm just, I love the recipe so much and I hate the process so much that it causes me to not want, you know, I love it, but I hate it. So it's, it's a bit of a conundrum. So it's possible that I will just bow to the metal tins just so that I don't have the frustration of pouring and trying to salvage all this. Because this is actually a, you know, a pretty easy recipe other than this part of it. All right, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I have at least five that don't, that are not full. There's probably more like six. I think there, there's another one that's not full. All these here on the right hand side, on my right hand side, they're full. Over here on the left, 
they're not full. And because my Rode mic is facing that way, you're probably not going to be able to hear me very well, but that's what it looks like when you're done. And then I will let that harden up, and I'll take those tubes out, and I will put the caps on, which are here in this bag still. But yeah, these will be all personal use. Probably all these over here I'll just use for personal, and these I'll give away to my friends and my family. Alright, I'll probably do one more little clip, maybe. I don't know, this is getting really long. You guys are probably getting bored. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Alright, here we go. So, we're at the very end. And what I have to do is take each tube out and put a cap on it. And if you were doing this perfectly right, before you put each tube in, you would you would back it down a little bit because if you can see, it's sticking up out of the tube, and I can't back it down anymore. So I just have to very carefully put that lid on there. And if I would have backed down, if I would have twisted the tube down a little bit before I put it in, it would have been uh, more level when I poured it. I keep forgetting to do that. And it's such a pain in the butt to do that to each and every one. I mean, who wants to do that? But if you don't do that, you get that little hump there. And you just have to deal with it just very carefully put the lid on and then there's always going to be something some kind of excess so just wipe that down so that your tube isn't all messy and everything and see sometimes it's really wonky like it's sticking all up right there Again, if I was doing this professionally, I would have machines that, you know, made everything much easier. But because this is small batch, I just have to, you know, go with the flow here. That's not too bad. But if you want to do it right, <laughs> just make sure that you twist down that tube just a little bit before you stick it in your jig here so that way when you pour it it will be even with the top that one's not too bad alright so I'm gonna just go through and cap all of these and clean them all off and I will be done okay guys here we are at the end so I started out with 38 of these lip balm tubes and as you saw before that was too many and so what I should have done is blocked off a few more of these holes and started out with like 35 of those tubes because I've had this lip balm recipe yield 36 and I've had it yield 38 before so there can be some discrepancies so what I would do differently next time is just start out with less tubes exposed I would just masking tape off a few more holes and so what I ended up with was 28 full perfect tubes and then I've got eight more over here that are imperfect there's probably some uh, pockets of air or whatever in there um, but what I did was the the other two I kind of combined them 
I just did what I could. I kind of just, I, I put the other tubes, I, you know, I met them face to face like that. And then I pushed the, the balm out of the other ones into a couple of these. And so I ended up with eight imperfect ones instead of 10. And honestly, I just had to throw those tubes away. There's really no way I can reuse them. And so that was a waste. So yeah, I would just mask off more of these holes to start out with. And I actually forgot the, the last time I made this lip balm was like two years ago because, you know, I don't, I don't have that many friends. And so, you know, I did have t lip balm for two years, although we did kind of have to stretch it there at the end. And one thing that I figured out the last time, which I forgot about this time, was that predicament where I had the, uh, all the lip balm tubes sitting up like that and I had to turn them over. I remember now, after the fact, that what I did was I took a cutting board. I've got this just old plastic cutting board. And so what I did was after I set the lip balm tubes on there, I set the cutting board on top of that and then I flipped it over very oh so carefully. Not that was not carefully, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and so the lip balm tubes stayed intact because I had this underneath it the whole time. You know, it was you, you do have to be careful cuz it is it is kind of tricky, but you just set the cutting board on top of your lip balms and then flip it over at the same time as you can just imagine all those lip balm tubes being under there and then nothing falls out so that's my little hack for if your lip balm tubes are falling out of this form just put that cutting board there and flip it over and then you'll just sit there and you'll fill them right there on the cutting board you just you, you won't even move it and so you don't have any um, there's no way for them to move around unless you're just being really clumsy. And so I just wanted to add that because that was actually a really important thing that I figured out a couple of years ago and I totally forgot about it this year. And then the only other thing is when I took them out, there was quite a bit of lip balm still um, in there. And so I didn't get it all, but what I did was I went around with the tip of my knife and took that out and I scraped it onto these tubes. Like I said, these are the ones that I'm just going to keep hitting and use here personally, so it's no big deal. But I got most of it out. You can see I got there's still a little bit that I missed, but that's not bad. It's mostly clean. And then there was one more thing I wanted to tell you about. What was that? <laughs> I might have to edit again. Oh, no, it was just a summarization, you know. If you want to make lip balm on your own, you don't have to get this complex. Like I said, my lip balm's name is Complex 34, but you don't have to do that. You can just pick one or two really good moisturizing oils and then add a, you know, have five ounces of that oil and add in two ounces of beeswax and you melt it down and you pour it and that's it. That's all it has to be. You don't have to infuse the oils. You don't have to add all those fancy organic oils that I use. And you actually don't even have to put essential oils in there though. That's really, you know, it's really nice to at least have one or two essential oils, but it can be a very, very basic recipe. You don't have to get this complicated or anything like that. Alrighty. I think that's it, finally. <laughs> Sorry it took so long, but that was a lot of information to get across. Okay guys, take it easy.